Hello and welcome to Right Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk about the right heart. The right heart is a little different than the left heart, and the right heart kind of gets the short end of the stick here because we talk about the left heart all the time. We talk about myocardial infarctions, and we talk about all the problems that occurs with the left heart, heart failure, and all these other things. And the right heart just kind of gets left out in all the discussions. But the right heart has a significant role in maintaining our cardiac output and our perfusion to our body. The right heart receives the systemic blood, so as you follow the blood through the circulation, the blood is coming back through the veins, it goes into the right side of the heart, right atria, right ventricle, and then it moves off into the lungs. So if you think about that hemodynamically, that means that we're getting the preload from the systemic circulation, and that's filling the right side of the heart, and then we're pumping into the lungs. The lungs are a high volume, low pressure type of a system, as opposed to the arterial circulation that is a high pressure system. So we can tolerate very big changes in volume, which is the preload, into the right side of the heart, but we cannot tolerate large changes in pressure for the right side of the heart, and that's called the afterload. Now, what's making the afterload for the right side of the heart is the lungs. So some etiologies of right heart failure include pulmonary embolism, very common cause of right heart failure. So we suddenly have an embolism. We suddenly have a blood clot that gets stuck in one of those pulmonary arteries, okay, not in the not in the airways. It's not in the airways, it's in the vasculature. So when you listen to the lungs, you may not hear any change at all with a pulmonary embolism because the clot is actually in the vasculature. Well, if we've blocked one of those big vessels there, the right side of the heart is going to have to pump against that vasculature that now has a clot in it, and that's going to increase our pressures that the right side has to pump against. So too much afterload. Pulmonary hypertension is another cause and pulmonary hypertension for one reason or another, the pulmonary vasculature starts to become hypertrophied. Now when it hypertrophies, it starts to narrow the vessels. And then that causes hypertension. The pulmonary system is not used to having hypertension. The left side of the heart can adjust a little bit to having some high blood pressure. The right side cannot adjust as well. And so we tend to get failure a lot quicker on the right side as a result of pulmonary hypertension or PE. COPD or asthma. So those are situations that involve the airways. But as we start to collect air and as we start to have air trapping occur in COPD or asthma, that is also going to compress the vasculature. We compress the vasculature of the lung, and that's going to increase the pressure the right side of the heart has to pump against. Another condition that can cause the vasculature to clamp down in the lung is hypercapnia. Having a high CO2 level causes the vasculature to clamp down. Now the right side has to pump against more pressure. Interestingly, you know, we put in an LVAD, that's a left ventricular assist device, to try to improve the function of the left side of the heart, but oftentimes it makes the function of the right side worse. <laughs> so here's uh, hemodynamically what happens in a patient who has right ventricular failure. So if you take a look at, let, let's say, for example, that we took the heart and we kind of sliced it in half and we were to, able to look down on the ventricles, on the, the two chambers. We see the right ventricle kind of looks like what we're seeing over there on the normal side, a little crescent piece, and then the left ventricle is going to be the bigger, stronger one there. Now what happens with right ventricular overload is it starts to expand and expand and expand, and it compresses the left ventricle. So what you're going to find is that with either ventricle failing, the other one is going to soon fail behind it. 
So in this case here where the right ventricle is big and it's filled with all of this blood, it can't pump, it's pressing against the left ventricle. Now the left ventricle can't pump as much blood and we're going to end up with biventricular failure. Same thing can be true with left ventricular failure where now we don't have enough blood circulating to get to the right ventricle and now the right side will start to fail as well. So what's happening is the fluid builds up. So we look at this. This is your hemodynamic diagram here. The left side of the heart is pumping out to the systemic circulation, back to the lungs. The right side is pumping to the lungs, back to the left side. So that's what we have going on in our diagram here. Fluid is backing up in the right ventricle, and in most cases, again, this is a lung issue. So in most cases, it's going to be related to too much pressure in the lung. So we back up to the right ventricle. Overstretches the right ventricle, decreases the cardiac output, then that decreases the left ventricular preload, or in other words, the amount of blood that's getting to the left side, right? Because if the vasculature is narrowed through the lungs, we can't get as much blood over to the left side. And that'll decrease cardiac output on the left side. Stimulation of compensation occurs, which is going to worsen our fluid overload. Uh, those compens compensatory mechanisms include our renin-angiotensin system and aldosterone, both of which are going to tell the kidneys to hang on to fluid. In this situation where the heart's failing, we don't need more fluid on board. We need less. And unfortunately, what happens, though, is that the heart starts hanging on to more fluid, or the, the kidneys start hanging on to more fluid, and then that causes even worse overload. Increased peripheral or pulmonary vascular resistance, that's also going to occur because uh, one of the compensatory mechanisms is the sympathetic nervous system, which causes the vasculature to clamp down. The renin-angiotensin system, renin also causes some vasculature to clamp down as well. So we have an increase in our vascular resistance, both in the periphery and in the pulmonary system. And of course, increasing pulmonary vascular resistance is only going to make the right-sided failure worse. Because we have decreased blood flow and decreased cardiac output, we will have decreased coronary blood flow, which will result in ischemia of the heart, and that will even worsen our decreasing cardiac output. So on our assessment, we want to be looking for jugular venous distension, JVD. This will be worse on inspiration. Now normally on inspiration, we have a negative pressure in the chest. You take a breath in, and that's caused by a vacuum in the chest wall that is sucking air in. So that's normal during inspiration. However, when the patient has right ventricular failure, that negative pressure in the chest is going to suck more fluid back to the heart and further overwhelm the heart. So we're going to see that jugular venous distension actually increase during inspiration instead of decreasing. Edema, peripheral, so look for it out in the periphery. We can look for ascites, we can look for hepatomegaly. The hepatojugular reflex is another way of assessing fluid volume where we're pressing on the liver and we're watching the jugular veins to see if they're uh, filling too much. 12-lead EKG, we're going to be looking at a chest x-ray, an echo. All of those things can give us information about the right side of the heart and how well it is functioning. So our management is going to be to treat the causative problem. We want to treat that pulmonary hypertension or treat that pulmonary embolism. That's the underlying problem that's causing this. So that's what we're going to be focusing most of our attention on. We want to try to manage our preload. In some cases, we may have to maintain a certain level of preload. For example, in a right-sided MI, typically we try to give the patient or keep the patient on the higher side of their preload. Whereas in right-sided failure, we'd want to try and keep that preload low. We don't want the patient to be dry as such, but we want to keep the preload low because the more fluid we give them, the more fluid's going to overwhelm that right side of the heart. Reduce the afterload. So we can do that with medications, vasodilators, uh, specifically ones that may focus on the lung, but we, uh, you know, oftentimes they'll start out, especially with pulmonary hypertension, they'll start out with calcium channel blockers, uh, which are vasodilators. So they'll try and open up those respiratory, those pulmonary vessels. Manage the compensatory mechanisms so that they aren't making the patient worse. They use beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. Those kind of medications block some of those compensatory mechanisms. It's possible that we may actually have to use a right ventricular assist device. That's what's shown over here on the right-hand side. 
So this is a type of right ventricular assist device. You can see there's a blood inlet area on that and toward the tip or the distal area of that catheter. There is a blood outlet area. So it takes blood from the atria, or I'm sorry, from the ventricle and then pumps it into the pulmonary artery so that it helps to move more blood through that right side of the heart. Those things don't work or we need that extra support, especially if we're trying to fix something, maybe a pulmonary embolus that's, that we're trying to remove. We may have to use some extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO, in the meantime. So some of the takeaways, keep in mind that an increase in volume is well tolerated, but an increase in pressure is not. Right-sided failure is usually caused by lung dysfunction. If the right side fails, the left side is going to at least have some dysfunction, if not fail itself. Focus on decreasing your pulmonary vascular resistance. Thank you for joining me for Right Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, 